ki a mezurie, i su mesa de trivulasa, dai una mamma stracca. La nostra è parte, ma ha dato a sa, ma consegnato a sa, a una piscina che la via assistia e su, e su parto eh, e questa mi ha piccato che sono mani al manna e caliente e è matta è matta e come ti scherzi no, non è molto legato su Riccia scusate, ne venne Costantino You see, it rarely happened like this. The midwife handed me over, all red like a newly skinned rabbit, to the young neighbor who had helped with the delivery. An easy delivery, I being the sixth child. The midwife washed her hands in the water intended for me and went away grumbling. Adriana took me in her large peasant hands, sat down in front of the terracotta bowl full of sun-warmed water and washed me with loving care. Having dried me, she sprinkled me with talc, which she herself had got by scratching the soft stone found in Arani against granite. Then she wrapped me in a long linen cloth, thus rigid from armpits to feet, as was the custom in those days, neat and clean, serene as a little corpse, she placed me next to my mother. Look, this is the man who brings the wood. This is the stonemason, you see. This is a trowel and a bucket. This is our whole family. There's the mason with a ladder, the man who returns from the countryside, our life.
Constantino Nivola was born on the 5th of July 1911 at Arani in the heart of Barbaggia in Sardinia. From childhood on, he had learned the trade of mason and plasterer from his father and his brothers, a knowledge handed down through the ages which would indeed be a great help to him, both in his discovery of art and in the development of his poetic and creative vein. But every moment of his infancy and boyhood, however poor, would leave an indelible mark on him. He himself confesses in a letter to Maria Lai in 1986, I come out of the town following the pigs as they run towards the pigsties, which enclose them, protecting them. The little village of memories, both beautiful and ugly. These remembered holidays, little by little, I feel will be my favorite journeys. The town of Arani had more than enough stonemasons, renowned throughout the province. Five of the best, including my father, had set up a cooperative. Like so many of the Arani masons, they went everywhere on foot to provide their services where needed. When I was 11 or 12, they took me along with them on one of these occasions. The client was the doctor in the town of Ortelli, and the job was to build a villa. The expedition consisted of five master builders and four laborers, left early in the morning for Otelli, a journey of four hours on foot. Together with the equipment and blankets, we took with us some dry bread, a chunk of very salty cheese, and a piece of pork lard to last us for three weeks. On our return journey to Arani, the women sweeping outside the front door stopped for a moment watching us pass by, seeing us as a band of beggars, while we saw ourselves as heroes who had won the battle. At only 15, Constantino Nivola left Orani for Sassari, depriving his family of masons of his strong young arms. The insistence of both the boy and the painter Mario Delitala, who had chanced to see him drawing on the wall with a roof tile and was looking for a young assistant, made it possible for Constantino to leave home amidst the tears of his sisters and the sorrowful wisdom of his mother who could see in his departure the opportunity to save at least one of her children from a life of overwork and dire poverty. But this was only the first of a series of departures and inevitable returns. In 1931, at the age of 20, Constantino won a scholarship and left for Monza to go to the High Institute of Commercial Art, where his teachers would be, among others, Marino Marini, and the architects Pagano and Persico. But above all, among the students, was she, Ruth Guggenheim, his future wife. Having got his diploma and found a good job in Milan as art director of Olivetti at just 26, the couple married in 1937. Constantino introduced her to his mother. Take a look at this Jewish girl, and his mother replied, Comenta la nostra signora, like the Madonna. But for Ruth, who had had to flee from Frankfurt, it was not easy to be Jewish at that time. Even on their honeymoon, they received a telegram calling them back to Milan. Antisemitism was growing, and with it, fear. So from Milan to Paris, and the year after, in 1939, to New York for good, 
Ruth Nivola relates, childhood memories were very vivid for Costantino. They were extremely important elements of his life. Sardinia and his childhood are inseparable. All his life he felt a deep and often sad nostalgia for his homeland. But there was also another element in the tie he felt for Sardinia, the effects of exile. Exile can often open up enormous perspectives just because it is so painful. It was in exile that Sardinia revealed to him her true self, with which he felt a great affinity. And perhaps from this came much of his creativity and his inspiration. Here I am in my second homeland, the other being Sardinia, naturally. I love both like a wicked lover. Perhaps one's heart gets bigger confronted by the Atlantic. Who knows? In 1939, Nivola was in New York in a new and different world. The first part of his life in America was hard. Ruth worked as a nanny. Titino designed Christmas cards, reproduced them by hand and sold them to the big department stores. Every day he committed to memory a good number of his English words and his Sardinian way of life helped him to be frugal. I, he would say, am not an immigrant looking for a new social status. I'm a political refugee. But even though life was difficult, interesting events were soon to happen. In fact, it was because of his experience of graphics gained at Olivetti that Costantino started to work for various periodicals and soon things improved. He became friends with de Koenig, Leger, Pollock and Steinberg. But above all, he met Le Corbusier. Nivola himself recalls, each lesson was on learning to see because seeing is not a natural gift, but a discipline to be learnt. We get to know objects only because they have a function. Seeing is disinterested contemplation. Le Corbusier taught me to recognize universal values. Ruth Nivola recalls, in January 1946, Le Corbusier arrived in New York and was taken by a group of admirers to Dalpezzo a restaurant where all the artists and intellectuals of that time gathered. And there, Costantino was introduced to Le Corbusier. A few days passed and the two met again. Le Corbusier was staying in a hotel on Fifth Avenue between 8th and Washington Square. We were living in a small apartment on 8th Avenue. The two met quite by chance on the corner on a freezing January day. Costantino invited him back to our humble little home of one and a half rooms with a kitchen, a cupboard and the ceiling painted ultramarine blue. For Le Cabousier, one glance was enough to take in our simple abode. And after greeting me, he turned to Costantino and said, Monsieur Nivola, you have a lovely family which enters into the feeling of art. You have talent. I believe you will have many opportunities. Your works are like puppets and you must learn to pull the strings and which role every element has to play in plastic composition.
In 1949, Nivola bought a house in East Hampton, Long Island, not far from the ocean. And from then on, he dedicated himself more and more to sculpture. And after the first indecisiveness, he discovered his desire to create sculptures for contemporary architecture using modern materials. The materials of his youth as an apprentice mason, of the metropolis of contemporary civilization. It was actually in this house that he and Le Corbusier met again. It was there on the nearby beach, almost as a game with his children, that he would invent sand casting, casting cement onto modeled sand. Le Corbusier would also play with the family at sand casting. With time and with the success of the works made with this technique of low relief in wet sand, Costantino built a little beach in front of his studio and instead of salt water, which soon made his work deteriorate, he took to using tap water and in this way began his biggest and most famous panels.
Costantino had an extremely complex nature, an intense sadness, a deep sorrow for the world, a great joie de vivre, and a capacity to reinvent life again and again all coexisted in him. He had a terror of a banal life and was always trying to shape it according to his own image. In a certain sense, there was a lot of the child in him, in the best sense of the word, the same freshness, the same sense of living things for the first time, the total joy of his instincts. And then he also had a very special and close rapport with nature, almost person to person, and a similar rapport with his working materials, feeling that although seemingly inert, they had their own life and their own intelligence. One advantage of my late age is knowing I shall never see you old. I look at you from above, like a cloud meditating on your earthly expression of suffering joy. For you, all places are cushions where you may sink the reassuring golden weight of your head. You are at the same time big and small, cold and hot, always comforting. Beds represent the exploration of the human microcosm, where the illusion of continuity of life is entwined mysteriously with solitude, vulnerability and transfiguration of self.
In 1966, after success and numerous acknowledgments in America, Nirola was given the job of designing and building a piazza on his island at Nuoro in honor of Sebastiano Sata, the poet and orator. A group of bronze figures shelter under age-old rocks arranged to form a cavern shaped like the many caverns to be found in the island's craggy mountains. The secret life is the public life of Sebastiano Sata, prince of the forum and enchanted poet in the scorched lands of their island community.
from a letter to Maria Lai in 1984. Willpower is not part of my star. All my good intentions based on this noble virtue fail wretchedly. For a certain time I managed to write at least one letter a day spontaneously, which makes me feel good. But then I disobey for one day, which becomes weeks, even months, until I feel really bad. No, Maria, if I must continue to live, it would not be by willpower. I am not a fanatic for living, even if it arouses my curiosity, or still surprises me. Oh, the age of infancy, the only one worth living, with its intensity for every moment. As an animal, I do not feel like a bear, but rather like a swallow flying from one summer to another. The year after the completion of these sculptures, perhaps among the most beautiful of the Sardinian artist, in 1988, Constantino Nivola died. Having accomplished his greatest dream, that of leaving an important work of art in his native land. From then on, a simple, essential strength became more and more defined in my sculpture, in which I tried to place a whole collection of visual and sensorial evocations. The result was a female form, but not necessarily as a point of departure. The bulging wall of the rustic house in my magic age of childhood always hid a treasure, the thin, flat bread which swelled in the heat of the oven with its promise of satisfying my constant hunger. In the same way, the pregnant woman hides the secret of a marvelous child in her womb. I would like to dedicate these sculptures to the Sardinian woman who hopes for a marvelous child.
through the window of the room comes warm air and with it thousands of pleasing sounds from birds, crickets, bees. Also the popping of wild pea pods and other enchantments of nature and the season as if they were celebrating my birth and inviting me to join them in that strange adventure, existence. It was half past midday on the 5th of July, 1911.